This morning, church, I want to start a brand new sermon series called Recalibrate. Every, every, every September, I, I really want to focus on, on the idea or the word of re, which means again. And, you know, coming out of, coming out of summer, uh, where, you know, we kind of get out of our routines. We, maybe we get out of our spiritual disciplines a little bit. Uh, then all of a sudden we come into the fall and, you know, kids go back to school and vacations are over. And, and I just really believe it's, it's a great, time uh, to recalibrate. The, the end of the year is almost upon us. How many know it's almost Christmas? Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. Before you know it, that white stuff will be on the ground. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be shoveling, right? It, it's almost Christmas and and with, then, with every, you know, with every new year, but, but here we are in this September time frame to really, to recalibrate, to spiritually uh, take inventory of where we are, where, where we are in God, where we are in our journey. Are you playing? Are you good? I can't hear you, man. Let me, don't be so quiet. Yeah. But where, where are we? And, and I want you to think all the way back to the book of Genesis. When, when Adam sinned, when, when Adam failed, what, what did God do? God didn't ignore him. God called out to Adam and said, Adam, where are you? Yes. It wasn't Adam that called out to God at that point. It was God saying, Adam, where are you? Where, where, where have you been? Because we, we have a, a nightly schedule here in the cool of the evening and, and Adam didn't show up. Where are you, Adam? You see, my friends, this is what I love about the New Testament. I love about the sacrifice of Christ, that, that it's God reaching out to us. It's the Lord's voice calling us by name, stirring us in the spirit, asking us, where are you? Uh, maybe you need to recalibrate a little bit this morning. Maybe you need to recalibrate in your, in your family, in your spiritual walk. And really a simple question, simple question that is so profound. I love to ask people. I just say to them, hey, how are you in the Lord? How are you in the Lord doing it? You know, people say, well, you know, pastor, it could be better. And, you know, it could be closer. You know, I was closer. And I could be more intimate with the Lord. And, but, but, but church, watch this. When we feel distant from God, I want you to know God never moved. Come on, somebody. God never moves. It's, it's we that move. It's we that create that space. It's we that create that distance. And when we, we begin to sense that, I believe it's the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit that says to us, you've moved, you've, you've shifted. Or maybe as we were singing and praying this morning that the enemy wants to build barriers uh, around you and lock you in and somehow lock you down. And this is why we need fresh starts and we need breakthroughs. What, what are we really asking God for a fresh touch? Because we, we sense there is a, a distance. God's saying, where are you? Where are you today? Where are you in God? And as I was praying about this recalibration, recalibration, I just kept hearing, I kept hearing the the statement, firm foundations, firm foundations. Because this morning, and, and even in this sermon series, I really want to speak to you about building a life that is rock solid. Building a life that is rock solid, that is built on firm foundations, that, that is not on shifting sand, that's not, that's not shaky or double-minded, but it is rock solid. And, and the only life that you can really build that is rock solid is building a life on Christ and building a life on the teachings of Christ. I'm going to take you into the Word of God in Matthew chapter 7. And we teach this story to the children and you know, they sing a song about it, and we kind, of, we kind of say, oh, you know, this must be a children's story. But the reality is that Jesus wasn't talking to children. He was talking to adults. And we find this passage, this little story, in between the teaching where Jesus said, I never knew you, and a healing. He puts this right in the middle. He puts this story right after of, I never knew you, really almost to say, here's how to avoid me not knowing you. This is what, this is what you need to do. Here's how you, here's how you build a life that is rock solid. And my friends, you know, you, you don't have to be condemned 
but this morning you know you you know you know if you are on solid ground this morning or if you're on shifting sand if you've made uh, decisions that have caused you to be unstable or if or if your footing is sure in the Bible in the Old Testament and in the New Testament always talks about this idea of being on solid ground taking steps that are firm taking steps that are you're sure of I mean listen nobody wants to drive on a bridge those of you that have driven to Niagara you know you got that you know that that Niagara bridge like nobody wants to drive on a bridge and have that have that idea will this bridge collapse right you just believe I don't know maybe you speed up right maybe you have the philosophy if I go faster I get off this bridge quicker but 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 we all have this idea that if I that if I get on a bridge or I get on an elevator and I go up a a high tower that that somebody has done their homework that the proper engineers have been hired that nobody cut corners that nobody tried to do something you know shifty that that I don't I'm not afraid that this building is going to collapse or this bridge is going to collapse we we want to have the the sense and the faith let's use that word we want to have the faith that I'm on sure footing right. because the truth is that the higher you want to go the deeper and the stronger your foundations need to be does that make sense every year we we rent a, a little you know a cottage near the water not on the water but near the water and I love to walk I love to pray and and you know there there are different anybody ever been to the beach come on somebody yeah and and I'm sure that at some point all of you think you are an architect and you are an engineer and and you begin to build on the beach you build sand castles and you know you you, you think like wow I'm gonna build a city and roadways and all the rest of it and and you know for my grandson if I get a pail with some wet sand and flop it over he just thinks I'm I'm you know Leonardo da Vinci he just thinks that oh no no you're the greatest artist there ever was but 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 the reality is that you know as I'm walking the beach I literally had to stop and even speak to people at times because the things they build on 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 the beach are just phenomenal artistic people that that really take time it's not just a, a pail in water I mean this is there's some thought that goes into this but but how many understand that as beautiful as that thing really looks it's one wave away from being washed it's one rainstorm away. It's, it's one mean-spirited person that, that wants to come down and, and crush your, you know what I'm talking about, crush your castle, eh? We have builders and we have crushers. And, I, and I'm sure we've probably done both. But think about it. No matter how beautiful, no matter how beautiful that structure looks, it's going to be washed away. Why? It's not on firm foundation. As a matter of fact, even the cottages, even they understand, hey, if we want to be on the water, we have to be a certain distance away from the water because near the water, the ground is just not solid. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about, are you building on sure foundation? Or are you making decisions that are rock solid? And, and so Jesus teaches us. He teaches us how to build a rock solid life that can withstand the storms of life. And I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. And I want us to stand as we read the Word of God. I also have another, I have another uh, verse this morning that I actually put in my phone blast. And by the way, if you want to receive our monthly uh, phone blast that I sent out to encourage you, build faith, you can uh, just give your, your name and your number to the office. But here's actually the scripture I sent out of Philippians 1, 6. Being confident of this very thing. Being confident of this very thing, that he, being God, who has begun a good work in you, will complete it until the day of Christ. So that when we say, even though I don't see it, even though I don't feel it, I know that God is working, that God, that God is a master construction worker. Amen. That what he has begun, he's going to be faithful to complete it. You, as a matter of fact, in Ephesians, it tells us that, that we are God's workmanship. He's his work of art. We're his work of art. God is working and he's not going to stop. But in Matthew chapter 7, listen, these are the words of Jesus. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine or these teachings, isn't it, isn't it true a few years ago, maybe more than a few, there was this, good, this movement around that, you know, people were saying, well, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? You know what's amazing? Jesus actually never says, what would I do? 
But you know what Jesus does say? What did I say? Because following Christ really is about understanding what did Jesus say and what did Jesus teach? And so maybe what we ought to be saying is, hey, what did Jesus say about that? He says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, there's the key. I will liken him to a wise man or a wise woman who built their house on the rock, on firm foundation, on solid ground, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, now catch it church, everybody's hearing. So he's not saying some of you didn't hear. He said some heard and did and some heard and watch this and does not do that. He will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. You're, you know what? Let me give you the today vernacular. Jesus is saying you're an idiot. If you ignore my words, you're an idiot. You're foolish. You're like an individual that built his house on the sand. And well, oh Lord, what's wrong with that? He says, well, the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat on the house and it fell. But then he says this, and great was its fall. Not only did it fall, great was its fall, which means that everybody saw it. It was a catastrophe in church this morning. Listen, God doesn't want your life to be a catastrophe. He doesn't want it to be a chaotic mess that collapses and people walk by and say, wow, it was so beautiful at one time. What happened to this structure? What happened to this structure? Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you have given us keys to build a, a rock solid life. That you desire for us to stand and walk on firm foundations. I thank you Lord that you are desiring to remove, remove everything that is shaky and shifty from our lives. And to cause us Lord that by faith we could trust in you and in your word. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody before you're seated and tell them, build on firm foundation. Come on, tell them that. Come on, tell them, build on firm foundation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said a lot of things, but, but really there's about 50 major sayings or teachings of the Lord that he instructs us on that really you can you can build your life on and we know that Christ is the rock but really what Jesus is saying is here is if you're gonna build on firm foundation you're gonna build on my sayings you're gonna build on the things that I teach you you're not gonna ignore what I am what I am saying to you and you're gonna do these things and so I, I want us to understand that when we're talking about recalibrating when we're talking about taking inventory of our lives I I wrote four words down here. They all start with B. Number one, am I, am I believing? Am I believing and am I living out what I truly believe? How many times God's people believe something, but then they live the exact opposite? Number two, my behavior. What's my character like? Is it, is it in line with Christ? Is it in line with the things that, that he said? Number three, my belonging, do I actually belong to the Lord? You know, Paul said to Timothy, the Lord knows those that are his. I hope you understand today that just because you're sitting in a church doesn't mean you belong to the Lord. How many know there's a difference, huh? That's like saying, uh, because, I, because I, I'm in my garage, that makes me a car. No, it doesn't. Because you're in church doesn't mean you belong to the Lord, but the Lord is saying, are you mine today? Do you, do you have that confidence? Do you have that assurance? Not that, listen, listen, not that you're religious, but that you understand that the very first power that the Lord gave you was to become the children of God. That no matter what, you're son and daughter of the Lord. And you know in your heart of hearts, the Lord knows his children. 
I, w- I was saying, you know, no matter where you go, whether it's the beach or you take them out for a, a day to Canada's Wonderland, how many understand that when you go home, you go home with your own children? Yes. And that you know your children. You know their voice, you know their cry, you know their, you know their behavior. And if you can't find them, you don't go looking for other people's children, you look for yours. And if you can't find yours, just don't take one that's available. God says, I know my children. I know them by name and they, and this, they know me. And, and in John 10, he says, I, I know them by voice. Oh, Roy, I know I said to you be a little louder. Now I'm going to tell you to be a little quieter. You're, you're doing good. You're like, Pastor, you're driving me crazy. It's all right. It's all right. So we have belief. We have belonging. And then we have behavior. And then finally, we have bearing fruit. Am I, am I bearing fruit? Is there evidence on the tree of my life that that I am bearing evidence, the fruit of the Spirit, the the fruit of the Lord. In other words, that people can look at my life and say, aha, I know that person is a Christian simply because of the fruit that comes from them. They don't even have to open their mouth. They don't even have to talk. They don't have to say anything. I just just know those people are, they're believers, that they are different. So we have believing, belonging, behavior, and are we bearing fruit? We're recalibrating. We're, We're asking ourselves the question, am I on firm foundation? Because here's the truth. Let's look at the word. Notice the key. Does them. Notice the key. Let me... I was going to change this color. Pastor said, use, use black. Let's see if Pastor Mo is right here. Um, does them. How's that, Pastor Mo? Woo! Come on. Does them is obedience. The Lord's saying to us, don't just hear and do nothing about it. Don't, don't look at the Word of God and go, well, that's really nice, and, and I'm going to go do the opposite or completely ignore it. He says, if you're going to build on firm foundation, because here's the reality. Everybody is building something. A life, a career, a spiritual walk. Everybody's building something. And the Lord says, I want you to build. As a matter of fact, Paul said he had an anointing of being a master builder. That God gave him a grace. My friends, listen, do you know that there is a grace on your life to build? To build a marriage, to build children, to build a business, to build a company. whatever, Whatever it is that God has put on your heart, God gives you empowerment. Whether it's a ministry, a gifting, a talent, to build upon it. That's why I love these young people. I spend so much time with them because I, I want to ensure that, that at such a tender age, they are, they are making the right decisions that are based on firm foundations that will last them a lifetime. He says, do them. Do the things that I'm, I'm telling you because if you do it, Jesus said, I'm going to liken you to a wise person. And wise people, he said, they build on solid rock. They, they build so that, notice, when storms come, that's, that's what this is, rain, notice rain, floods, rain come from the top, floods come from the bottom, and notice he says winds. In other words, here's what the Lord is saying. You're getting it from all sides. You ever been there? Huh? Oh, Lord, I'm going to drown, and then there's rain coming from on top of me, and the wind is blowing, and, and you know what a mistake that people make is this. Sometimes people wait till it's too late to build. Hmm? It's very difficult to build in storms. When you're in a storm, you want to go inside. You, you don't want to be on the outside. You want to be on, on the inside. You have, you have already built a life. You have already built a structure that is firm that when storms come, and by the way, my friends, everybody faces storms. Everybody. You know, we look at some lives and we go, well, they have no problems. They all, oh, oh, their life is perfect. I wish they were them. No, you don't wish they were them. Everybody faces adversity at some time. Everybody is going to feel overwhelmed like the wind is going to blow me away and the, the floods are going to drown me and the, and the rain is going to pour on me and I'm, I'm cold and I'm wet and I'm soaking and, and no one else is going through this except for me. Simply not true. Everybody builds. Everybody faces storms. Everybody hears. Here's the truth. The truth is that foundations are optional. Tell somebody, say it's optional. Right? You get to choose. You get to choose firm foundation or sand. Well, pastor, why would anybody pick sand? Well, because sand is easy. 
I don't have to work at it. I don't have to, I don't have to sweat at it. It's, it's quick. It's fast. It's, it's, I can, it's pliable. It's movable. I, I don't have to dig. I don't have to, I don't have to move rocks. I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to, you know, use all this energy to be digging foundations. I can be done quickly and I can make it look amazing so that people go, wow, that's so cool. Have you ever, have you ever gone to buy a house? If there's an issue in the foundation, they try to trick you on the main level, right? Oh, look how beautiful this house is. Look how beautiful. And, and you notice you can never go up to the roof, right? Nobody, nobody ever says, no real estate agent goes, hey, let's get the ladder and go. No, the roof and the foundation, no, no, no. They, they, they want to show, look at that. Oh, look how beautiful this looks. And, and, I, and I was saying, I was talking to my neighbor. He has a beautiful house. And he, I was just saying, hey, how you doing? He says, you know what? He goes, Tony, I'm, he goes, I got a problem. I have water coming into the basement. He goes and I, and I, and I said, you know, can they patch it up? He goes, oh, I think, I think they're going to have to go from the outside. How many know that, that that's a lot of work and thousands of dollars? See, what, what's the use of buying a multi-million dollar home and, 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 and it looks so beautiful on the outside and it has all the cosmetic things in place, but if your foundations are leaking and cracked? Hmm? Could, could it be sometimes, church, that we try more of the cosmetics because we know the foundation is cracked, huh? I mean, listen, I, I come from the cosmetics world, right? I, I know about covering cracks and, er and everything else that it is a multi-billion dollar industry because why? We are trying to hide things that we don't like. Yes? Sometimes we do that spiritually. Sometimes we say, all right, you know what? Maybe, maybe I can avoid the, the leaky basement and the things that are falling apart by, by making other things look good. And here's what the Lord says. Forget that stuff. He says, forget the outside. Forget the cosmetics. Focus on the firm foundation. Are you building? Are you doing what I'm telling you to do so that when the storms of life come, your structure, your life can withstand it? Everybody faces storms. Everybody, but not everybody's life actually makes it. This is why, you know, alcohol and drugs and pornography and social media and all these other things that, that people really want to medicate themselves with. Why do they do it? Because they, because they recognize that they have now built on shaky sand and their structure and their life is falling apart. And my friends, let me tell you, when your life falls apart, usually those around you fall with you. It's not a one individual thing. If you, have a, if you have an alcoholic parent, it's not just that person's issue. It becomes the whole family's problem. Everybody begins to suffer. Everybody begins to, to have pain. And so the Lord says, listen, you're all going to face storms. Make sure that you're on solid rock so that when these storms come, no matter what, you could say, I've built on the rock. I, I've built on Christ. No matter how hard the wind blows and the, and the rain comes down and the floods come up, I'm going to withstand because my house is built on the rock. Somebody ought to give God praise for that. And now you're not going to choose the optional sand. You're not going to choose the, the easy way out. You're, you're going to understand that there are going to be times where I'm going to need God. Even when, when Noah built an ark and it hadn't rained in hundreds of years and there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. And they must have thought for over a hundred years, they thought, you're an idiot, man. What, what, are, what are you building? It's never rained. What do you mean God spoke to you? And, but how many know that there came a day when that first raindrop fell? And they weren't ready. And the Bible says they ran to the ark. They ran to the ark. And the Bible says, and God shut the doors. God said, that's it. There, there's a season to come. And then there is a season that is over. My friends, listen, we are, we are living. I really believe if we, are, if we are not in the last days, we are in the early uh, parts of, of the last days. I, I've been talking to Pastor Moses about the, the deception. The spiritual deception, the acceleration of deception uh, that, I, that I see in the world, the, the philosophies that people are falling for, and, and because of social media, I mean, you know, anything that happens, anybody in the world, you can have the information, boom, just like that. It's never been like that in the history of the world. Think about it. Think about it. In Jesus' day, if a lie started in Israel, 
Case in point, think about how long it would take to go around the world before, hey, we heard this story over in Israel or, or Palestine or somewhere else or somewhere in the Roman Empire. But today, today, the moment a lie, a deception starts, boom, it's all around the world all at once. You know what's going on instantly. The enemy is using this. I, I said to the church this morning or the service this morning that, do you know that the technology and the equipment, the technology and the equipment to chip every individual on the earth is already in place. It's not something that it's not something that's coming, it is here. You have to understand that when technology is released to you, they've already had it. They didn't come up with it yesterday. The tech and they've said this publicly, go on the you don't believe me, go on go on the internet, because I know you believe the internet more. Go on the internet, Google it, you know. I know some of you believe Google more than God, right? So go ahead, go and Google it. But, but the technology to chip every human being on the planet is here now. You say, Pastor, why is this important? I want you to think for a moment. Because now here's what people are going to say. Oh, Pastor, the chip, the chip is the mark. The chip is not the mark. The mark, please read your Bible. The mark has to be connected to the worship of the beast. And the false prophet has to come before the beast because he's the one that introduces it. But, but watch this. Why is it important? Because every day with your debit card, your visa, your phone, your apps, with this idea of a digital footprint and, and the idea of, of giving you a, a chip, whatever, what they are conditioning us to is that when the mark actually arrives, it'll be like nothing. You'll just be like, oh, okay, here's the... Here's the next thing they want us to do and we're going to do it. It's all about conditioning us. This is why we, we need to be in the Word. This is why we need to know God. This is why you, you need to build your life on a firm foundation so that you will not be deceived. So much deception. So many lies that are running around. And even when you, even when you, you bring the Word of God, I mean, we've had people offended at our program, our podcast, what was that about? Watch this. They're not offended at the word. They're not saying you guys are heretics, you guys aren't teaching the word. You know why they get offended? Because you hurt my feelings. When people leave the church this week, you know, simply because you hurt my feelings. Not You didn't tell the truth. You hurt my feelings. Church, can I just help you? God has no problem hurting your feelings. Huh? God would rather hurt your feelings than have you wind up in hell. He's more concerned about your soul and your salvation than your little feelings. But what do we live? We live in a world of feelings. If you hurt my feelings, if you offend me, I don't care about the truth. Just make sure that you don't offend me and don't tell me that I'm something that I'm not because I have a feeling. And so we've given all this value and importance to feelings instead of what is the truth. There's going to be a lot of people in hell with broken feelings. People that lived out of their feelings instead of living out of their spirit and being mature enough to go into the Word and say, hey, listen, if, if, if the Word and I disagree, you're wrong. Huh? But you know, what do we have? We have worlds and governments. I'm online. Worlds and governments that when they disagree with God, they tell God he's wrong. Well, God's never been wrong. God's never going never gonna to be wrong. And every time he says to you, these are the rewards and these are the consequences. And when man chooses consequences and then they, then they find themselves in a bad spot, then they blame God. Amazing. Everybody say firm foundation. So notice everybody hears. Everybody's building something. Everybody faces storms and and then Jesus says this, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not, you don't do it. Uh, you're rebellious. You're resistant. Maybe, maybe your idea is, what does God know? What does Jesus know about my life? I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna to ignore that. Then Jesus said, you're like a foolish individual. You're not smart any longer. You're not wise any longer. You're acting foolishly. And something is going to happen to you because you're like a man that built on the sand and, and the rain, same thing. Notice the rain descends, the flood comes up and the winds blow and they beat on the house and then it fell, collapsed. Many times the tragedy, church, the tragedy of collapsed lives. I, 
You know, I love music. I tell you that I love all kinds of music, honestly, all kinds of genre. And, and, and you know, uh, I was, I was, um, well, I think I could say it. You know, I was listening to some Whitney Houston. What, what an incredible talent. What an incredible voice. And, 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 and here's, here's a, you know, and, and the majority of them, right, Kimberly, they start in the church just like, just like Kimberly, right? And, and someone says, hey, you know, you're talented and, and you don't want to be in the church. You can, you can, you can make a lot of money and, you know, we can, we can go places and you can become famous. And then, and then all of a sudden they're climbing, climbing, climbing. But at some point, when and the weight of life gets so heavy that the foundation cannot bear. Then you have a collapse. And in her case, death. And I believe if memory serves her daughter, did her daughter die the same way? Great was the fall. Now you say, oh, Pastor, you're, you're just saying that everybody only all sick for Jesus. No, I'm not even saying that, uh, you know, there, there are people that are believers that have quote unquote secular, uh, you know, secular careers and they, and they write and I, I get that part. I have no issue with it in the sense, but watch this. Unless your foundation is sure, Especially when you begin to get into spheres of, of public arenas. My friend, I, I've watched it in music. I've watched it in politics. You, you watch it in sports in where, where all of a sudden the pressure of people, the demands and everything that goes on in those worlds. What happens? My, my friends, listen, even amongst ministers. Hey, Pastor Moses, when, when you become the rock star minister and you become all that and everybody, everybody looks to you and you become isolated and all of a sudden the pressure of life that comes on you, what happens? You collapse. And great is the fall. Jesus said the, the fall is catastrophic. My friends, I want to ask you again. What are you building? And what are you building on? Are you on solid rock, firm foundation? Are you, are you utilizing the wisdom of God? Are you going to the Lord and saying, Lord, how do I build my life? And how do I make my decisions? Because you know what the truth is, what's hidden in this message? Really what's hidden in this message is Jesus is saying, what are the quality of your decisions? What are you basing them on? Because the sum of your life is based on the decisions you make. Even, you know, we, we came out of the whole sermon series on forgiveness. The forgiveness is about making decisions. I make a decision to forgive people. I make a decision to go God's way. I, I make a decision to come to church. I, I make a decision to be consistent. I, I make a decision to obey even when it costs me. How many, and I'm, I'm about to close. How many quote unquote smart people do you know that make the dumbest decisions. <laughs> hey, you're like, you're like, don't you have a PhD? Like, how can you be that dumb? How can, how can, how can you, how could you make that decision? How could you, how could you self-destruct like that? What, what forced you? What, what caused you to make that decision when, when, when you're so brilliant in every place else? But like, for example, let me give you an example. Like, like, like I, I have met with doctors and therapists and whatever. And, and I mean, they're educated people. They're so smart. But then when it comes to, you know, love relationships and decisions, they just make the dumbest decisions. Why, why, why did you marry that person? Why, why, did you even, why did you even decide to go out with that person? I mean, let, me, let me tell you how subtle the devil is. Somehow, you know, my cell phone used to be like pretty locked, you know? Now I get these crazy messages. Like, you know, vile messages. Some of them are encrypted. I, I got this message. Uh, hey, hey, uh, Joan, uh, how you doing today? I don't even know what the name was. And, and so I'm like, hey, listen, you have the wrong number. Uh, this is not Joan. Oh, oh, who is this? Now I'm like, really? <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sarah, it wasn't you that messaged me, was it? No. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. But, and, and, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, listen, you know, you have the wrong number. And, and, then, and then they said this. Then they said this on the text. Well, you know, I don't believe there are any mistakes in life. Maybe you and I should connect. I'm like, well, that's your first mistake. You ain't connecting with me. <laughs> but church, what about, what about the whole advent of Facebook where... 
people find each other and they, they find past relationships and past girlfriends and boyfriends and, and all of a sudden you, 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 you begin to stir up emotions of the past. Can I just tell you something? That kind of stuff is shaky ground. Don't, don't even open the door. Don't even give the enemy that kind of opportunity because, listen, you may not know your weaknesses, but the enemy knows your weakness. You know this morning. Actually, it's afternoon now, but you know where you're on shaky ground and when you're on solid ground. You could tell me, you know, pastor, I'm solid here, but I've got to tell you, in this area of my life, I'm really shaky at church. I want, I want, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. This is my first closing. I'm going to close with this. How many closings do I get? <laughs> eh? You know, when it comes to closing, Pastor Moses believes he has no limits. You know what I mean? He's like, but listen, I, I really, I want to close with this. I want you to be very, very careful. Hear me, please. Of the idols that may be in your heart. Things that you may not even consider an idol, but they, they are a weakness. They are a longing because the enemy loves to speak to the idols of our hearts. And sometimes, this is going to be deep, listen to me. Sometimes even prophetic people can pick up on the idols of your heart. And they actually speak to idols that are in your heart rather than the word of the Lord. And you need to have the discernment to know the difference. Is this the word of God or is this speaking to an idol of my heart, a weakness of my heart? Because many people to fulfill the idol of their heart have missed God. Because they're looking for the temporal, they're, they're looking for the now and this will fill me and this will satisfy me and if, and if only I get married, if only I get that job, if only I get that career, if only, if only I live in that neighborhood, all the if onlys. And in the end we find out that we've been serving idols and not God and I'm telling you that's shaky ground and your life will collapse. I want you to come and remove the stuff and worship team. You can come out. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to minister unto us just a powerful song. But I'm asking you this morning, this afternoon, I'm asking you. Look, the Lord is asking you, number one, where are you? But the Lord is asking you, even online, what's the ground that you're building on? Is it firm? Is it shaky? You say, well, pastor, maybe, maybe I'm building on shaky sand. Maybe I've made some poor decisions. What do, I, what do I do? Here's the beauty of God. Repent. Repent this morning. Repent. Turn your, turn your life around. This is what it means to reevaluate, to, to recalibrate, to turn it around that, that you don't always have to be on shaky ground. You don't have to, you don't have to follow the, the decisions of fathers and mothers and people that have gone on before you. Listen, you, you, you can even turn generational things around today.